training that really works. Please welcome the CEO and President of IntelliCare, Mr. Mario Silas. I was at first very apprehensive to accept the invitation to speak here, primarily because you, by your profession, uh, training development officers, learning uh, on HR, I mean, you guys overpower even CEOs by the extent of knowledge you have. And look at your discipline. Over the past decade or two, unprecedented in growth. The spectrum of the variety of training, the depth of specialization, ODs, succession planning, unbelievable. And so there was, say, CEO, a baby boomer versus millennials. And what can I share with these guys? So I called, two months ago, I called our HR head, and I didn't know about this invitation yet. And I said, uh, we're going to have a strategic planning, and please, I would like to see your report before the strategic planning session, as your budget have increased by 100% every year for the past four years. So I called HR heads. He comes in with 10 folders, voluminous, puts it on the side of my desk, sits down and says, and before I could ask the question, he opens up the folders, this is what we have done, this is what we have covered over the past years, this is the cost of the training, etc., etc. And I looked at him and I said, one question, how are people changed? He said, that's not part of my report. <laughs> So he gives me a letter, an invitation to speak to PSTD in Cebu. And I thought there was a lesson to be learned. Never ask your HR serious questions. You have to be a speaker in a convention. <laughs> I'll try to remember that always. But let, let me just simply say it this way. Stephen Covey, years ago, eight years ago, I think, he had a book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and I'm sure it's not possible for most of you. But I still remember his first rule. His first rule was, begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. 18 years ago, we formed our company. The original incorporators and the first five employees, 18 years ago, had mass. And today the priest cannot hardly say mass anymore, but we still invite him to say mass nevertheless. 18 years ago, 10 people believed in a dream. They made the dream into a mission vision. Not words, not lines, but real substantive dream. They believed in it that they gave away everything else. The alternative to do another work. The money that they had, everything was placed into the business. No other investment alternatives. It was such a compelling belief that everybody knew what we had to do. And there we were, starting out. 34 HFOs in the Philippines 80 years ago. We were number 35. Number 35. Today, 14 HMOs were probably number one. But that's not the story. The story is the process. First problem, first challenge. We knew we were going to grow. How do we cascade this mission and vision? How to communicate, cascade it to the organization? so that everyone coming in over the years will buy into it. How can they believe that mission vision? 
if they have the same level of passion, of conviction, as the originals, first challenge in my mind for TV is, can you engage the organization? Problem. Over the years, as people come in, our organization to date is 1,500 workforce from original of 10. How do you convince 1,500 people that the dream started 18 years ago is alive and vibrant? How does one individual coming from Cebu, from Davao, from Otabao, from Ilocos, people coming from the provincial and the cities, people with educational background from the public schools to the private schools, how do you get all of them mingling together, a thousand five hundred of them, and you tell them, we respect your individuality, we respect your uniqueness, we respect your diversity, but we must find a common ground. Where is that unity in that diversity? Training and development. I need you there. We knew that was the challenge. It's a beautiful challenge in a constant world. Now let's make the challenge more difficult. Challenge number two. I will move all of these things that we have to do from context one to context two. We now have to put change. The world is completely evolving. We are in a state of flux. The saying goes, there's nothing permanent in this world but change. How do you sell engagement to unique individuals in a world that's constantly changing? How is it possible that you can embrace change and be still remain the same? How is it that I can embrace change and remain the same? What do I mean by that? The culture of the company is in the mission vision. We say we are the preeminent company in this industry. And this is our culture. We will do our business with honesty, with integrity. We believe in hard work, but never forgetting that compassion the sense of humanity must always be in our work. This is not a matter that you can compromise with change. How can I embrace change and still remain the same? Or does it mean that because I have to compete in this world, I will not compromise my integrity, my honesty? So, TD, I need you to help me there. How can we now engage an organization <coughs> Have them accept change and yet believe in who they are. Third context of the challenge. Nicholas Taleb, in his book, The Black Swan, says that there are events by their very reality that cannot be predicted. These events will happen. However, this is the problem. These are not simple events. These events can be so significant that when it happens, it can either mean the death or the life of an organization. But challenge number three, help me prepare the organization for such black swans. <coughs> so we have three challenges. In my mind, was very clear then as it is clear today. How did we respond to this? Challenge number one, engage our employee force. Engage everyone in our organization. What we did, and I'm just gonna tell you now statistically, we got the statistics. Our senior officers Average tenure in our 18 or 17 year old company, average tenure is 15 years. Average tenure of our junior officers, 10 years. Average tenure of our supervisors in the last 
seven years. It was a terrific retention rate of key original people. So here we had a mission vision by the original group. They hired people and they sold the essence of that business to them. They grew with the organization. With their experience, they built on the character of the organization. Every one of them transmitted the message. Problem always is when you tell a story from the first row in the classroom to the last row, the story changes. Everybody, as you whisper along the line, changes happens. But not when you have guys with 15, 10 years of tenure. When I speak to them, they speak it down and they communicate it. The message remains the same. The key, therefore, to challenge number one was make sure that that message remains with your key people. Your key people passes it on and they have key people under them who will cascade it down. Al calls it leverage. But, first, the mission and vision must be compelling. It must touch the core of every human being, regardless of our differences. What was that that we said about the mission vision? We said, we are an HMO. Without us, our country is a very poor country. The budget to health is what? 30 billion, 50 billion, in a national economy that's doing trillions, we spend so much on health. And yet, the Constitution says, health is a right, not a privilege, but the right of every Filipino. But we cannot afford it. So we say the private sector has to come in. We are going to be in this business. We are going to make a difference because with us, we can get more people covered than otherwise would have been possible. Our lives will be dedicated to increasing the coverage to as many Filipinos as possible. We are going to make a difference. We have a business that will be run like a business, but it has a nobility of purpose. We must, we must touch every individual that comes in, college or four years working, joining us, we will touch in their hearts the desire to make a difference. That was for us the compelling reason of our story. All the years that we have hired and we have trained, the story is still original. It is still the same. What did we do with challenge number two? In the world of change, how can we still be the same? It will take me whole day to make a dissertation of that. Let me give you just an example. We embrace technology. We embrace the change in IT. We embrace the change in process. One of that today is what we call the alpha. The alphabet, the telephone, phone, tablet. There's no tablet, right? The word really exists. Telephone and tablet. It's now called the tablet. <laughs> so, PROs, we use our PROs, patient relations officer. All over the country, we have people on the sites in the hospitals. They used to call by phone. This person is here. Is this card valid? What are the benefits of this person? What is the contract of the company with us? What are its limitations? Call, telephone call, drop lines, etc. Ah, we spent money and we gave each one of them a tablet. A member of ours goes to the hospital, has a card, we get the information. Covered assistance is given on the spot. Did we compromise our sense of humanity in the service? Did we compromise our compassion? because we used the fabric? No. High touch remains high touch. What in fact happened was, high tech 
allow our people more time to really relate with the members rather than to stare at the phone, validating whether they were a member or not. We always emphasize, we serve the Filipino people, especially to those who are sick, especially those mothers who are bringing their children with the dengue fever to the hospital. We want our PROs to attend to them as soon as possible to alleviate the pain. We teach them anger management and we tell them they're not angry at you. They're angry at their own situation. They're angry at their own, in effect, panic. That's how we train our people. We have, in effect, embraced change in terms of new trends, fads, competition. We have changed, but we will never compromise who we are. Third challenge was the challenge of the Black Swan. This Black Swan is defined by its very nature as unpredictable. How can you prepare an organization for a truly unpredictable event? Which would be, if you were not prepared, catastrophic in nature. All our officers nationwide, from Davao, Cebu, Bacolor, all over Luzon. We have servers stand alone. Any one of our sites, on all of our sites collapse, that server, server has on real time the basic information of our organization. Two, call centers. We don't have call centers on one site. We will have one in Makati, we will have one in Cebu, we will have one in Bacolod. Any place that gets down an earthquake or any disaster, all calls are channeled to the next call center. Our clients must be assured that we are a disaster prepared organization. It's going to make us expensive? Fine. It's going to make us 10% expensive on the market? Fine. But at the end of the day, we cannot compromise the service as this is about human life. Our business is about the human life. You do not play around with that. So, third, not over and beyond redundancy, we said, how do we train the people to be prepared? We did our own internal training. In all of these examples I'm giving you, challenge one, enabling the organization. Challenge two, embracing change and yet being who you are. Challenge three, recognizing that the world holds surprises. What do we do in the black swan? We prepare. I have never talked about training and development as a section or a department because training and development is not section or department. Training and development is a culture of an organization. The accountability at the end of the day rests here and all my senior officers. We take responsibility. Every member who wants to become an officer of our organization understands that your role is not only to lead, not only to manage, but to mentor. Because if you cannot do that, then you have no part in our organization. Our training and development is the form that will appear as the number of people as so and so. But the substance, it is the learning organization that is the foundation of training and development. Now training and development can grow like an acorn tree or can grow as a weed. It depends on your soil. Does management, does your organization truly believe in developing their people? Do they truly believe that they should spend on them because they are worth spending on? If they do not believe in that, you're dead anyway. You don't have the budget. Sometimes I feel that I'm just signing checks all the time. But at the risk, at the risk of being invited again to speak, I asked, Ramel, I asked the HR head, please, can you just tell me what is our ROI? 
and he looks at me, you know, sir, your speech in Cebu is perfect timing. The next speaker will talk about ROI and training in the market. <laughs> so I will have to sit down and listen to the next speaker for, for us to get the answer of ROI.